It looks to me like there's no way that President Obama is going to get this thing through the House of Representatives, this uh, let's bomb, 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 bomb Syria thing. Uh, there are 232. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That's not no's. That's. Well, where's the no's? Yeah, total no's. 232. That's, that's, I mean, you can't do it with that. There's 47. This is in the House of Representatives. 47 who say that they are going to say yes. 153 who say they haven't made their mind up, and 232 who are telling uh, this, this over at TPM, they're tracking this, 232 who are saying no thanks. In the Senate, it's uh, 30 yes, 20 no, 50 undecided. So uh, we'll see how that shakes out. But the American people are quite clearly saying no. The latest CNN poll, 70, over 70, I think it was 71%, said no. Even if Congress passes this thing, no. Don't bomb Syria. Don't get involved in the middle of somebody else's civil war. That's not our business. Now, the arguments that are being made, and had uh, Ron and I had an opportunity to actually get into the debate, this kind of new news blew open our conversation, but the arguments that are being made are that you know, hey, we, we took out Gaddafi, and that seemed to work out pretty good. Now, uh, or, uh, you know, well, look at what Bill Clinton did in Bosnia. Wasn't that wonderful? And I think it's really important to realize that there are some very, very significant differences. As you well know, I consider Thomas Friedman to be one of our nation's um, less credible commentators who represents himself as being on the left. I'm, I'm not a fan of Thomas Friedman. That said, you know, he's no dummy, and every now and then he gets something right. And as much as I like to criticize, uh, or in some cases even ridicule Thomas Friedman, and I've done so in print and on the radio, I think that it's important to acknowledge people when they do something right. And he made an observation in yesterday's New York Times or apparently the day before yesterday, Saturday's New York Times, in an op-ed titled Same War, Different Country, that I have to say had not occurred to me, and we've been talking, you and I have been talking about this for, what, a, you know, a week, basically, and three hours a day, well, four hours a day, if you include the TV show at night, for, for a week, for, for anyway, for four days last week, and... I don't think that anybody suggested this, and I ser it didn't occur to me. But Friedman says it, just he just lays it out so brilliantly. He points out that, first of all, in Bosnia, it's that you can't draw a parallel to Bosnia. It's not like we're trying to stop Slobodan and Milosevic and, and Radovan Kedovic, you know, and their rape camps and their, their ethnic cleansing and all that kind of stuff. It's not, it, it's not that. Because there you had fairly clearly divided, here's where the Serbs are, the Christian Serbs, here's where the Muslim folks are, I forget which ethnicity they were, here are the Christian Croats, as I recall. Uh, here's the, you know, here are the different groups, forgive me if I'm getting this wrong, but they, you know, there, there was a fair amount of geographic separation. Uh, one group was going after another group. We actually intervened uh, you know, to save the Muslims from the Christians. Are, you know, in a way, arguably. But NATO went in. I mean, this was a NATO operation, not just the United States. And not only that, NATO put boots on the ground and stayed there for a long time to keep these warring factions apart and help them establish self-governance and new national boundaries as the former Yugoslavia disintegrated after the fall of the Soviet Union. So that is completely unlike what's going on in Syria. You can't draw that parallel. And then people say, well, you know, this is uh, just like Libya. You know, we got rid of Qaddafi. It was no big deal. Well, actually, as Thomas Friedman opens his Saturday op-ed in the New York Times, he said this is from the British newspaper, The Independent, which, by the way, is not The Guardian, the liberal newspaper. I mean, The Independent is pretty much The Independent. Quote, Libya has plunged unnoticed into its worst political and economic crisis since the defeat of Qaddafi two years ago, 
Government authority is disintegrating in all parts of the country, putting in doubt claims by American, British, and French politicians that NATO's military action in Libya in 2011 was an outstanding example of a successful foreign policy intervention which should be repeated in Syria. And, and then he, he goes on to quote the independent as, here's a metric that you can use. The output of Libya's high price, uh, prized high-quality crude oil has plunged from 1.4 million barrels a day earlier this year to just 160,000 barrels a day today. So the country's falling apart, and their primary source of income is falling apart. Everything's falling apart. Libya is going down the tubes. And you could argue it's because we took out Gaddafi. Iraq is going down the tubes. You could argue it's because we took out Saddam Hussein. Egypt's in a crisis. Is it because we helped you know, support the takeout of Mubarak? So what's going on here? Well, uh, what Thomas Friedman points out is that they're all the same war. He said, in each case, you've got a country that was artificially created by the Allies after World War I, carved out of the Ottoman Empire. And each one of these countries actually has multiple ethnicities, multiple tribes and groups in it. And for several generations has had strongmen dictators who have basically said to the Muslims, you can't kill the Christians. To the Christians, you can't kill the Jews. To the Jews, you can't, or actually, I don't think they're trying to kill anybody, but you, you get the point. You know, to the Druze, and, you know, you guys, you get along, live with each other. Women, they can go to school. It's okay. Stuff like that. You know, they've been secular societies. Gaddafi's, Hussein, uh, Saddam Hussein's, Assad's. And when you take that dictator out, all these groups start going after each other. And you get a civil war that could last 100 years to resolve. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Which is another really, really strong reason to say, no, wait a minute, let's stop. In fact, let's stop even arming the rebels like we've been doing. Time to just back out and get out of it. 